Hello, my sweet summer children. I've got some juice to get you through the long night. If you are new to my channel, please take a moment and join the sweet summer family by clicking that subscribe button. One of the most mysterious things about A Song of Ice and Fire or Game of Thrones is the length of time seasons last. Old Nan tells us of a winter that lasted a generation. Babies were born, lived, and died all in darkness. Kings froze in their castles and mothers smothered their babies instead of watching them starve. That was the long night. And the long night occurred after the Age of Heroes. The Age of Heroes could have well likely been the preparation for the long night. Something like what we will see in Game of Thrones Season 7, and that's just my opinion. In the beginning of Clash of Kings, summer is ending, and this summer was the longest summer in living memory. It lasted 16 years to be exact. But why does summer last so long? And why does winter last so long? And why are autumn and spring so short or almost non-existent? So in a world of ice and fire, we get the view of a maester. And he says, though the citadel has long sought to learn the manner by which it may predict the length and change of the seasons, all efforts have been confounded. Sept and Barth appear to argue in a fragmentary trustees that the inconsistency of the seasons was a matter of magical art rather than trustworthy knowledge. Maester Nichols, the measure of days, otherwise a laudable work containing much abuse, seems influenced by this argument. Based upon his work on the movement of stars in the firmament, Nickel agrees unconvincingly that the seasons might once have been of regular length, determined solely by the way in which the globe faces the sun in its heavenly course. The notion behind it seems true enough that the lengthening and shortening of days, if more regular, would have led to more regular seasons, but he could find no evidence that such was ever the case beyond the most ancient of tales. So basically, like Earth, our seasons are based on basically where the Earth is in its orbit around the Sun, but it has a lot also to do with the tilt of the Earth's axis. Sometimes wherever you live is tilted towards the Sun, sometimes wherever you live is tilted away from the Sun. Now, some genius whiz kid graduate students from John Hopkins University in Baltimore go Blue Jays. They came up with the theory of the seasons, and I will link the whole article below. Basically, their scientific theory is that instead of one star, like Earth orbits, which is our sun, that this world of ice and fire has two stars that it orbits, which would lead to unpredictability of seasons changing. A trader from Karth told me that dragons come from the moon. The moon? He told me the moon was an egg, Khaleesi. That once there were two moons in the sky, but one wandered too close to the sun and it cracked from the heat. Out of it poured a thousand thousand dragons. That's interesting. If there was once two moons, then could there be two suns? And the way it's described in the two sun theory is it only looks to me to look like one sun because the way the orbit is, you can only see one sun at a time, which could make the witch that killed Daenerys' baby, it could make her prophecy about the sun setting in the west a bit more interesting. So I know George R.R. R. Martin is a sci-fi guy. It is known. In 1977, George R.R. R. Martin wrote his first novel called Dying of the Light. And it's basically about a planet called Warlorn whose wheel of fire or sun is gone and it's basic doom because it isn't orbiting anything. It's like free floating into darkness. So being said George R.R. R. Martin seems to be into that kind of thing, I guess two suns and the two moons with the dragons drinking the sun's fire is plausible. But what I think has nothing to do with science and everything to do with magic. In my opinion, it's all about magic and dragons and white walkers. 
Now, the White Walkers have been sleeping for 8,000 years, or they just have not been seen for 8,000 years, but technically, they have been there all along. They weren't sleeping, they were coexisting, because Craster has been giving them baby boys for years and years. He has no sons and a shit ton of daughters, so Gilly's baby and the baby before Gilly's baby weren't the only ones. So the White Walkers were always there. They were just chilling. <laughs> no pun intended. They were coexisting. Now, in the tales of Duncan Egg, there's this quote, and it basically says that the summers have gotten shorter since the last dragon died. So before all the dragons died, winter still existed in Westeros. And during the longest summer is when the dragons were reborn back into the realm. So it is clear that dragons have an effect on the weather. But how? Is there some kind of equilibrium, some kind of balance? Are the seasons actually a dual fight between two deities, the Great Other and the Lord of Light? Morkoro tells us that there are only two gods, the Great Other, the God of Ice, and the Lord of Light, the God of Fire. When our story opens up, magic seems to be an afterthought, almost non-existent, and the thought of magic is almost laughable. There is no record of magic being used since the Doom of Valyria, but we know that technically not the case. Every time magic is used, there is a consequence on the surrounding environment. When you think of the types of magic in Westeros, in Essos, and in the story, what comes to mind? The children of the forest have their magic. The White Walkers are definitely magic. Shape-shifting and warging is magic. Necromancy is magic. The way wildfire is made is magic. The way these poisons are made is magic. The world of ice and fire is littered with magic. And George R.R. R. Martin has been careful to make the magic seem like it's not really that fucking magical. That's one of the things that draws a lot of people into the story is the balance of magic and realism. George R.R. R. Martin does a great way of masking the magic. And all of these said magical powers upset the balance of the universe and upset the natural order. Magic has a price. I speculated the doom of Valyria was caused by the Citadel, but I'm starting to rethink and believe that the doom was nature's answer to the overuse of magic in Valyria. It was a way to reset the balance. The children of the forest broke the arm of Dorne. They have control over some of the elements we know from that alone, so maybe they can affect the seasons. This summer ended when wolf and dragon dreams started. Wildfire was being made, Melisandre was looking in flames, Beric was being brought back from the dead, the dragons were being reborn, and there was a price for all of it. Winter is here. What do you guys think? Is it magic or is it science? Inquiring minds want to know. Actually, I just want to know. Thank you guys for all your love and your sweet comments and all of your support. Are you pumped for season seven or what? Let me know. And if you missed it, don't forget to watch the Golden Company trailer and see what we have in store for you this summer. As always, like this video if you like it and let me know your thoughts on all of this season madness that goes on in a world of ice and fire. You can check me out on Patreon and also you can connect with me on these social medias. Click that subscribe button Shame. and hit that notification bell so you can Shame. become a sweet summer child. Shame. Shame.